I think human biology is a uh, just a wonderful program in the sense that it pulls people from almost all uh, aspects of the university. And there's a lot of talk about that being the way that we should proceed in the future. But departments are quite firmly ensconced. And when, uh, at, at the end of my, uh, towards the end of my directorship, we were asked to do a uh, review of the human biology program. And because it's a program, human biology, like all programs, is periodically reviewed, which I think is a good thing. Departments uh, do the same thing very infrequently. So human biology is constantly uh, re-examining itself, r wondering if it's doing the right thing, and uh, challenging itself. In the course of doing that review, we checked universities all across the world to see how many had human biology programs. And I was astonished to find out that there are almost no other ones. Uh, human biology has, uh, has benefited, uh, this will sound paradoxical, but human biology has benefited right from the start uh, by having a certain contingent of people in the university who were antagonistic <laughs> towards it. And so it has constantly had to uh, prove itself over and over and over again. That's why these uh, reports get written. And they always come back glowing because the, uh, I think it's, it's not a unanimous consensus, but it's, a, um, it's, a, it's, it's certainly uh, the majority of the people who know about human biology uh, are just overwhelmed by what it's accomplished and what it continues to do. So nevertheless, uh, there, there are always these naysayers out there that saying, oh, the program's not rigorous or uh, the, 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 I guess that would be the major one, the program's not rigorous. And that's been laid to rest, I think, repeatedly um, with, with the hardest kind of evidence, for example, the proportion of students who apply to and are admitted to medical schools, for example. It's very, very favorable for human biology students. First of all, there's a substantial number of teachers in human biology who come from the medical school where undergraduate teaching uh, doesn't occur unless they find themselves in a program like human biology or they're invited over to give uh, a guest lecture or two, or there are some medical school courses which are, have become popular with undergraduates. And, and so, but even those courses are rarely taught by a single faculty member. They're usually team taught courses. And so, where, whereas uh, a faculty member in HS might be, is going to be teaching four courses a year in the medical school, you might be teaching eight lectures a year. So there's a, an incredible difference and uh, the opportunity therefore arises for medical school faculty to teach in the human biology program. And I would say that also applies for uh, people in the professional schools in general. So in, when I was in human biology, we had uh, people from the business school, people from the law school. and. Uh, that was a that was a that was really a gift for for Stanford undergraduates to be able to get those so get exposure to those people so early in their career. The the purpose of human biology is to teach. What and they don't have graduate students doing research. What they do have is a tremendous number of undergraduates doing research. I don't think that. May, that may not be uh, commonly appreciated, that the amount of research done by undergraduates in human biology is really uh, impressive. And the reason for that is that the program has quite a powerful set of institutions in place to encourage students to do research starting fairly early and trying to get them to uh, focus in. Many don't, 
the, the, the program, uh, because it's a human biology program, it's not designed only to uh, turn out researchers, but it turns out uh, a lot of good student research, and not just in laboratory research, but also field research, clinical research, and so on. So that's a very nice aspect of the program. Well, you know, why did, how come we know so many, how come human biology students have become so successful? I think increasingly in our society, the people that you hear about are people who can do a variety of things well. Uh, I think of the spectacular uh, physician writers like Atul Gawande, who, um, who uh, in addition to being a, uh, a surgeon, uh, is a very excellent writer and is able to, to write about problems as uh, dissimilar as uh, what's the best way to get through a complicated surgery uh, or uh, what, should, what kind of health policy decisions should we be making, how do we set, uh, how do we set salaries for doctors, those kinds of questions. He's, he's my um, sort of an ideal uh, kind of person who would come out of a human biology program, that kind of interdisciplinary thinking with nevertheless the ability to make a living as a, as a surgeon. You asked for an embarrassing moment and I couldn't come up with one, but I can tell you what some of the most enlightened moments I had, and that was, uh, in, there are many situations in human biology where students get together to make some decision. For example, to, uh, to help to decide, for example, who will be the next uh, TAs for the core, the core, the core assistants. And whenever uh, I was in any uh, circumstance involving that kind of interaction, I just thought, uh, <laughs> these people should be running the country, right? The level of the discourse uh, the interactions among the students, the levels of the arguments, uh, the ad absence of ad hominem, it was all quite, um, quite elevating and enlightening to me. I kept raising the issue about politics and uh, would propose to some of the most accomplished students that I uh, that I knew and was advising if they would ever consider politics and uh, they were uniformly <laughs> against the idea. Uh, and I was surprised by that because in, a, in an earlier generation, I guess the generation I came up in, there were lots of students very, who maybe to a fault who migrated towards a political, the political arena. And, um, and here I saw the best and the brightest who had no interest in politics, who, who, who thought that it was uh, not rewarding. And, and so then and now I wonder, well, who does that leave? Who does go into politics? And uh, could that possibly explain the, some of the problems that we're having?